Yes, well, when we, we always have a conference every year that includes FDA, NCI, and other stakeholders, and Rick Pastor suggested to us that we should look at, we didn't call it breakthrough, what should we do, the regulatory environment, when we see substantial evidence early? It seemed like an easy question, but the answer was very complicated, and we worked with many stakeholders, companies, and statisticians, and scientists, and we came up with a white paper on, on it, but it was it wasn't easy because the questions were hard. What does substantial evidence mean? Because in every disease setting it's very different. But in any event we reached a consensus and then we put it through legislation and at that point we thought that maybe there would be one or two drugs per year we, and we thought they would all be cancerous so we were pretty shocked at the outcome. It was unexpected um, and what we're very pleased about is it created this new pathway that's built on evidence and many diseases have uh, benefited from it. I think it's still 55 to 60 percent cancer, but there's a large percentage of, of, of rare diseases and other diseases that have benefited from this uh, designation. Oh my God, the process is first deciding what substantial evidence means. Every disease setting is different. What it means, uh, means in breast cancer is different than what it means in glioblastoma or pancreatic cancer. We were trying to look for definitions and it was very complicated, but we knew that the processes had to change. So when we brought it to legislation, uh, a lot of members of Congress thought, well, they can already do this. And the answer is maybe, but not so quickly. So what Breakthrough did is it changed, it was in statute, it was law now, so it changed the way uh, FDA handled it, it changed, uh, changed the way academics and others um, handled it. It changed culture among companies and among people because they started doing better, smarter trials that would really look for evidence earlier on. And of course, everybody thought they had a breakthrough. It was like everyone's children are brilliant and beautiful, but it was really um, game-changing. And part of it was because there was a better process that was defined, but it was because um, it really meant substantial evidence and all hands on deck. Well, of course, you know, as I said, breakthrough change culture. So companies, um, FDA, NCI, but cancer is a rare disease. So, you know, 30 years ago, or when, we, or when we started the war on cancer, it was one disease. Now we know it's hundreds and hundreds of diseases. And within subsets of cancer, there are rare diseases. We have some in lung cancer with squamous cell that may be, um, uh, EG, not EGF4, but other genetic uh, ALK, maybe 2% of a population, so clearly we're really looking to affect those populations in and outside of cancer where there are no obvious large trials necessary or possible. So that was really a, a major impact on rare diseases and many of them in cancer but many of them outside of cancer.